Hello everybody, this is Bud and this is hopefully the last uh, part in this i3 from scratch or setting up i3 with the i3 as um, uh, scripts and stuff like that. So I will just start Vivaldi and Sublime here really quickly and then we can start this video. And I will try to stick to the same workspace here uh, throughout this video. Uh, let's open a new terminal and move it to the right. Change font size, i3 info. There. <clears throat> and there's a lot of things I would like to <laughs> cover in this video. Uh, let's just start. Uh, I think I want to create key bindings here for Sublime and Vivaldi, the browser. Um, and I would also like to make all of these windows uh, that we see here now, except this one. I don't like this one. We will not need it. I just use this terminal now to start Vivaldi. We will set up a key binding so we don't need this <laughs> terminal to do that. Um, but this terminal um, and this terminal and this editor and this browser, I would like to set up rules for them, window rules. So let's start with that. Um, create key bindings for Firefox or Firefox, <laughs> Vivaldi and uh, Sublime. And it's more or less the same thing as these, so we can just copy them. Uh, mod F for Vivaldi. Uh, instance Vivaldi stable. I know it is Vivaldi stable because I have tried to record this video about 500 times now. Uh, but you can see here instance name Vivaldi. Great. And the command is Vivaldi stable. As we know from here. Um, Sublime. Like that. Bind sim mod S and Sublime. We can see the instance name here. S-U-B-L instance subl command subl subl easy save and reload errors errors are regarding conflicting uh, key bindings uh, mod f and mod s mod s is easy it's this one move scratch pad we don't need that anymore uh, that was related to the last video we did uh, mod f is uh, full screen so I kind of like to be able to toggle full screen sometimes, so I set that to mod F11. Right, save, reload. And now if I press mod F, it should focus Vivaldi. Pressing mod S, it focuses Sublime. And pressing mod S again, toggles Sublime. So it already works. Nice. Um, right, what was it more? Um, Making rules for these terminals. Yeah, let's make a key binding for this. It might look a bit weird, but let's do it anyways. Um, everything will be clear when this video is over. Uh, mod Y, i3 run summon instance. Uh, let's call this one i3 info. Execute i3 info. Save, reload, mod Y. You see, now we have two of these guys. I actually just want one, uh, but I wanted to create a key binding because that's easy now to also uh, make sure that it have a specific instance name and stuff like that. So if I close this one, now we have this and we can also toggle it with this key binding and that might be useful later here. Changing the font size, changing the window size. All right. Uh, and then we have this uh, terminal here, uh, which I cannot um, modify because this is the i3 process. If I close this window, i3 will um, close with it. Uh, but as you can see, it already have uh, the instance name i3. So and that is because I start that terminal in xinit here, uh, starting your XVT, naming it i3, executing i3 inside that terminal and important apply hackerman color scheme to it so uh, that means um, we, we know <laughs> the instance name of it that that, uh, that was the important thing we don't really need to set up a key binding for that um, right uh, and this terminal 
that we don't need anymore since we have the key binding for close uh, Vivaldi, I close this terminal and open Vivaldi again takes a while because Vivaldi is a bit slow to start there it is all right um, now I would like to create uh, window rules for this and I will use i3 king uh, I know I made a video quite recently uh, about this because I it was quite recently when I released the uh, i3 king um, Let's see if we can find it like this. Tiling Royale. Shouldn't be that many videos. This one, not this video, even if that could be interesting as well. But Tiling Royale here, that is about the um, i3 King, which is a replacement to i3's built in four window rules. Um, documentation, of course, as usual, is in the wiki. So you can find i3 King here. Uh, documentation about it but I will also talk a little bit about it now but not that much because uh, since I just made this video and here that's 50 minutes long here I go really in depth in what it is how it works and why I created it so I will try not to repeat too much uh, of that stuff here but some of it will be repetition um, all right i3 king is a bit different um, because yeah, I was I just had the idea that maybe we should set up key bindings for terminals also. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I would like to create three more key bindings here for three different types of terminals, and what what will be different about them will be uh, how the windows are positioned. Uh, so let's copy this htop guy again, paste paste it here. And this I want that on the normal mod return. That should create a floating terminal. And then we copy this and make a tiling terminal termina term termina no terminal um, and we make one more that is a uh, god damn it temp terminal there um, of course we have to have different key bindings for them so mod shift return to toggle the tile terminal and mod control return uh, also, I don't want to toggle this temp terminal, so we don't need i3 run, instead we just uh, use exec here, so we could actually just do this and that should work as well. Right, um, sure, now all the backspaces here are messed up, but whatever. Save, reload, conflict and key binding again, and of course it's the mod return, uh, which is the default key binding for opening a terminal i3 sensible terminal we have no now replaced that with our own here so let's uh, comment this guy out there save reload mod return and that's the floating terminal <clears throat> now we can toggle that instead of creating a new one every time we press the key mod shift return tiling terminal can toggle that as well and mod control return that doesn't use i3 run meaning that it will create a new terminal every time we fire up the command and the instance name will always be temp terminal <clears throat> all right um, but um, the floating terminal is not floating and also I would like the tiling terminal to be in a specific container and now we get into the uh, i3 king territory here um, <clears throat> we could actually create start i3 king with a key binding as well now maybe we should do this also you see this this looks it it's not pretty i think i want to use variables here um so really quickly here variables when you want to set up variables in your i3 config you can replace like long lines that uh, where, where you have the exact same content like exec no startup id you can put that in a variable for example um, and even bind some mod mod here that is like everywhere in the, in the uh, config you can replace that with with a variable so if we replace those with super 
and then we create that variable and we do it at the top of the script so we know that it will apply to the whole configuration so super will be bind sim mod 4. Notice that I'm not writing bind sim mod here, that will not work, you cannot use variables inside variables, you have to have to write mod 4 here. Um, save, reload, no issues and everything still works. Um, but there are more patterns here, as I mentioned, uh, exec no startup ID, for example. We have that everywhere, so uh, we can replace all of those occurrences with dollar um, exec instead. Put a variable for that, dollar exec will expand to exec no startup ID. Um, and actually, when you are, uh, I know that I, I personally at least, and probably maybe you too, uh, will use i3 run quite often. And you see, here, I guess we can do this, 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 and this, yeah, also this. There, uh, you see, this is a pattern as well, exec i3 run. As uh, so we can uh, replace all of them with yeah the expanded version and save yet uh, another uh, a couple of more characters. So I select all of them, i3 run. And then we create a variable for that as well. i3 run, which expands to exec i3, exec no startup id i3 run and you see you have to write the full thing here but then you never have to write it again um yeah that made these uh, lines uh, quite a lot uh, smaller you can also uh, in with i3 run i use long options everywhere you know uh, but you can there are short options uh, equivalent so this 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 will do the same thing and even this would also work, but uh, then it, in my opinion, short options, it's like it always gets difficult to remember what all those short options meant. So I prefer having long options in, in especially configuration files. So maybe we can leave it like this or something. Um, So yeah, I still divide them in two lines uh, when I feel it's uh, called for, or this doesn't look good. Mm. This can be on one line. This can be on two, whatever, whatever. Let's not spurg out completely about this stuff. Uh, uh, where was we? Uh, yeah, create a uh, key binding for, for uh, i3 king. And let's uh, use uh, super i for that. i3 run summon, we don't need mouse. And also often you don't need maybe mouse or summon and stuff like that. And you can trim the lines with that also. Um, or maybe we wanted it here. Uh, i3 king. Thing is, I just want to create a i3 king <laughs> window here. That's the only reason I'm doing this. Uh, urxvt name i3 king execute i3 king verbose save um, reload mod i there now we have i3 king window as well all right uh, i3 king when you first start it if you have never done that it will create a default rule file here uh, and that default rule file located here by the way home directory.config i3 king rules uh, it's completely um, worthless this configuration the default configuration all it does is uh, print a bunch of print a bunch of ah of course it doesn't do that there uh, every time a new window is created a bunch of notifications are printed the reason it didn't print any notifications for this win window the floating terminal 
which is not floating, but this window is, it wasn't new. It, it, uh, we just toggled it from the scratch pad and then uh, that doesn't trigger uh, i3king's rules. But every time we create a new window, it will trigger the rules and the default configuration completely useless, just prints a bunch of notifications. Uh, and the reason for that is that you're supposed to just read this and figure out how it works and then replace this with uh, your own configuration. This is my configuration. I set up a default rule, making all the windows floating by default. Save, and then we can go to i3 king, and to reload it, we just close this. Ah, mod i. Yeah, that's a way to reload it as well, I guess. Uh, since i3 king is only running command in this terminal, uh, when we control C here, it will <laughs> terminate the terminal. But I have actually. Um, uh, let's make this floating then. Uh, I have actually created um, or added a trap so you can send uh, a signal to i3king and uh, that will, uh, hopefully it's part of the read uh, wiki now, because I just added that. It isn't. Or Okay, whatever, something went wrong there. I thought I updated this just now. Um, in the release page here, you can look at one of the releases because I forgot to add this to the man page. This command um, will update i3king without the need to restarting the window and stuff like that. So there, you see it. Re restarts uh, and the command is kill usr1 and then you name the pid to i3king you can always see the pid in this uh, pid file here which is created at this location uh, i will add it to the wiki so you can read re read about this but i think we should use this uh, set up set this to a key binding i know this is a bit confusing this whole video here but whatever i i, I think it will be great actually what we can actually do is uh, Use that on Super I instead of creating the window. I, I have a feeling we would never need to, cr to create this i3 king window again. Um, so let's use uh, Super plus I exec this command. Reload the config and now mod I. You see, it reloads i3 king here. Uh, we only have one rule now, and that rule uh, will set all new windows to be floating. Meaning our floating terminal, for example, will always be floating now. Uh, also, I can see that the, we are using the mouse option, right? Yeah, I really don't want to do that. Um, now we are not using the mouse option. Uh, and also, now our tiling <laughs> terminal is floating. We could start with that, set up a rule for that. Uh, instance equals tiling terminal exec no start up id uh, i3 theta con id con id move to the A container and then uh, mod I to reload I3 king and our tiling terminal mod shift return can toggle it uh, but if we terminate it and create it again it should now trigger this rule and move it to the A container but that will get weird now when I think about it. I almost forgot here. It will just get weird if we do that when we have a bunch of tiled windows already. So let's do this instead. Set up rules for everything. Okay, that one goes there. Uh, then we have instance equals uh, i3 and i3 info. And I guess i3 king. Uh, class equals urxvt. Um, and there we use the same command here, but move them to the B container. Um, or we could actually put i3king in the 
D container. Let's do that. So just put it there, copy this there, put i3 king in the D container and these in the B container. And you can actually use uh, variables here in the i3 king config as well. Uh, so as you can see, this stuff here will be used a lot. So I like to create a variable called to container expands to that and then we can replace this stuff with to container right um, so we have for these and then we have sublime and vivaldi i want them in the c container so instance equals subble to container c instance equals vivaldi god damn it Vival, vivaldi stable to container c right now we have rules for all windows here right uh, and the floating window we don't need a rule for that because it will just trigger the default rule so that's fine um, well, actually the temp container, because the temp container will also be floating, and I don't want that. I want to add that as as an exception to the default rule. So instance equals temp terminal. There. Um, this means that we can now execute i3 king apply. That will apply the rules to all windows. It will cycle through all open windows and apply the rules to them. Now it looks like this. Um, yeah, I guess we don't have the tile, tile the tiling terminal. Or was it called tiling terminal? They didn't, didn't we say tiled? No, tiling terminal. Okay. Uh, mod shift return. You see, that opens here. Then we have a key binding to restore the layout. Um, so I think it's easy to see here. A tiling terminal here. Uh, I3 and I3 info in the B container. They are here. Uh, sure, this one is named bash because that's... Uh, um, yeah, whatever that is because xinit, you know, created it in, in, in xinit. Uh, and your XVT works like that. Even if you have the name option, it will set the name to the command. And here the command is bash. We could actually fix this uh, by applying a, a, a title format to it. Um, if we add a... We add a... a um, I think we can add no. Add it here instead. Title format instance. And then a comma there, and then we can try applying the rules again here. In one way, we only need to apply it for one window, but just to see if it works here. Mm. Now it moved I to King <sighs> to the wrong container there. I'm not, not sure why. But at least it re renamed uh, uh, the i3 container there. All right, uh, they are in the B container. i3 king is in the D container. For some reason, it moved it to the B container there. Uh, Sublime is in the C container, and Vivaldi is in the C container. Cool. And uh, what this means is that we have the i3 feed uh, layout active now, so we can toggle the containers, we can toggle the families, and stuff like that. And it should now also work to toggle the containers with our key bindings. So mod S or mod Y to show the info. Make it larger. Uh, mod S, focus sublime. Mod S again, toggle sublime. Mod S again, brings it back to the correct container and it brings Vivaldi with it, you know. Uh, and this should even work even if that, even here, you know, mod S brings it to the correct place. Uh, very very useful mod f also works nice um, now i would like to talk about uh, one feature of uh, 
i3 run it's also related to i3 king um that is renaming renaming window properties when they are created and you can do that easily with i3 run here um, <clears throat> using the command line option rename there is also rename instance and rename class rename title if you want to explicitly rename one of those properties but if you just use rename it will kind of automatically figure out which property you want to rename but it doesn't work if you are using multiple criteria when you search for the window so that is why these are here uh, but most of the time you will be fine with just using rename it's uh, it's a little bit easier to use but here here is some explanation on how that works um, the reason you would like to do that um, or there are a couple of reasons uh, in the web browser for example uh, we can open the settings window in Vivaldi here. So that's control F12. See here we have the settings window. Uh, it triggered the rule floating enable. It's actually hoping that it would. Huh. It should have triggered this rule actually, but it didn't. Okay, um, no, and here is the window. Valdi stable with Valdi stable. With Valdi stable. Yeah, that's that's awkward. Or you know maybe it is we haven't reloaded i3 king we have added rules but we haven't uploaded or reloaded the config we just used <laughs> sorry the apply option so if i reload uh, i3 king here with our mod i uh, close this guy and now if i open it it should put it in the uh, c container and it does there are more pop-up windows here uh, developer tools inspect this guy this guy should be floating here uh, because it have a really weird instance name it's like a chromium secret message instance name here uh, and we are targeting vivaldi stable as our instance but it have the same class name you can also see that it have a different window type and a different window role than some of the others uh, this one have window role browser but type normal this is also normal but type or roll app and this one is uh, roll pop-up uh, and then there are there is this window also open file which is the gtk uh, file chooser dialog uh, and that looks really weird when it's tiled right uh, and it can be really annoying when this happens uh, it have the window type dialog and the role gtk file chooser dialog but it have the same instance name as vivaldi so that's why it's triggered uh, moved it to the c container uh, and there are two solutions to this particular issue now uh, one is to be more specific with our rules here since they have different roles and everything and i just added that uh, uh, also to i3 king support for for example window uh, role uh, that that was just added like yesterday but you can do that you can tr target them and you can also target the window type but that using that it would be possible to set up individual rules for each of these windows but then you have to do that every time one an application opens a window figure out what's the window ro role and stuff like that sometimes it's worth it but it is a lot of work you know uh, and a bit annoying uh, a simpler, uh, easier way to do it, do it, but maybe not better for this uh, thing here, but I will show you anyway, is to use uh, the rename option. Uh, and that works like this. But it's still useful to rename uh, Vivaldi here, you will see. So, i3 run, we search for a window with the instance name Vivaldi stable. If it doesn't find that, execute Vivaldi stable. Uh, but if we instead search for Vivaldi main uh, that will not find any window named Vivaldi main there's no chance it will do that since all, all the, the Vivaldi instance name is Vivaldi stable you know 
sometimes it gets stuck that info window there but it's always vivaldi stable so vivaldi main is uh, our custom instance name that we are searching for it will not find it it will execute vivaldi stable uh, then it will get stuck in uh, that endless loop you know waiting for a window with the instance name vivaldi main to to appear but that will never happen unless you use rename and that's why you give it the original instance name here vivaldi stable as the op argument to rename so that means it will not find this window it will execute the command and then as soon as it finds a window matching this argument here it will rename it to vivaldi main so that uh, that's how it works so if i close vivaldi start to uh, reload the config uh, mod f takes a while because we value slow and there it is and now it is actually floating because now it didn't trigger our uh, Vivaldi stable window rule here <clears throat> so if we change that to Vivaldi main instead <clears throat> sorry close Vivaldi uh, reload i3 king and fire up Vivaldi again <laughs> now I can see this no it's not floating it's just the only window there so fire up Vivaldi again now it should uh, trigger that uh, Vivaldi main rule here and uh, put it in the C container. And now uh, if this is working, all other windows will uh, be floating. So, well, DevTools was already floating, so just to make sure it's floating. And uh, the settings floating. and. God damn it. I why did I open YouTube? So slow. Uh, github.com whatever. Much faster. Um, file open file. It's also floating, but it have a really annoying awkward size here because it remembers the last size of the window. Um Right, uh, but at least no other windows are uh, triggering this uh, our custom instance name uh, window rule and that, that is very useful. Another reason this is useful is that now we can press mod F which uh, focuses Vivaldi. It will always focus this one since it searches for Vivaldi main. If we didn't have this, uh, it would we wouldn't be sure if it triggered this one because that also have Vivaldi main and this also have Vivaldi stable or Vivaldi stable, you know. Uh, so that's another really good reason to use uh, the rename option for some applications. Where you, know, it, it's usually when there there is applications that does this that uh, sometimes opens a lot of other extra windows, you know. Then you can always trigger that uh, target that uh, main window, so to speak. And you don't, of course, you don't have to name it main, but that is my uh, convention for this. Uh, but I actually want uh, this window. I think that is fine to if that is uh, tiled. Uh, and I usually like to have them here in the D container and same with the dev tools. I think that works really nice uh, tiled. Um, dev tools, by the way, to make that work here, you have to, you have to enable, where is it? Here, there is an option here, dock side. And there you can select undock into separate window. Uh, if you don't do that, then it will be like tiled inside the web browser and then it, this will not work. Uh, hide that there. But this window, I don't want that tile. I want uh, the file chooser uh, dialog here open or uh, floating. So let's set up rules for these uh, other windows. Um, what we can do. Is this what uh, this is what I want to do since I know both of these share the class name here both of them have Vivaldi stable with uppercase V so it would kind of make sense to just create a rule here class equals Vivaldi stable the problem though is that that will uh, our main browser window also have Vivaldi stable with uppercase V so that will also get triggered there but then we could narrow this down here um, uh, using the window roles uh, since this one has window role app and this have window role pop-up pop-up we can use that 
So <clears throat> window, uh, let's see, is it yeah, roll underscore roll is equal to up or pop up to container D. Um, and then we have um, that uh, file opener guy file open file it also have vivaldi stable but it have uh, the window roll gtk file chooser dialog so that should never trigger and this should get floating now uh, but it should not trigger any of the other vivaldi rules uh, rules there but um, yeah. let's make it tiled cancel so that should work uh, Let's try this. Let's try it again quickly here uh, before we reload i3 king. Close these guys. Open dev tools. It's floating. It just put it in the last known position there, so it looks like that. And uh, the settings also floating in the same position. A bit annoying, but that's how it works. And file chooser dialog floating annoying size. All right. Close these guys, uh, reload i3 king, open uh, the settings, boom, tiled into the D container, open dev tools, boom, tiled into the D container, open stupid GTK file chooser dialog, floating but annoying size. We can actually fix this. Um, because we can set up a rule to resize the window when it's created if it's needed. So <clears throat> we can actually use this window roll uh, GTK file chooser dialog floating enable. We need to add that now because if we add a if we add one of these window roll uh, rules, it will not trigger the default rule. That's how the default rule works. If a window doesn't trigger any other rule, then it will uh, trigger the default rule. So that's why we have to <coughs> manually enter floating enable. And then we can also do resize. Uh, let's see now, I think it's set with, we can do 800 height, height 600. I think this will work. Um, Reload i3 king with our key binding. Open the stupid file chooser dialog, and boom! It's resized, but it have a weird position. We can also move it if we want to. Um, move um, position center. Save. Reload i3 king. Focus Vivaldi. Open the file chooser dialog. Boom. Move to the center. Everything works. The cool thing with this file chooser dialog, uh, I guess that's the only cool thing about it because no one likes that GTK file chooser dialog, but you know, that is the file chooser dialog in many uh, Linux applications. Uh, Sublime also have that. Uh, even if I never open uh, use this, I use uh, this plugin thing instead, but uh, just to show you that it's here as well and that ah this got a bit weird now because this actually triggered two rules here uh, that's why it's tiled i was hoping that that also would become floating but it actually did trigger that uh, extra rule we set up but it also triggered this rule because it have the same instance name but same thing here uh, hopefully this one is type dialog role gtk chooser and this is type normal so we could just add here uh, window type normal to our rule for sublime and now that shouldn't happen if we open that again open file ah also have to reload the i3 king rules open file Boom! You see, this matches uh, the same rule there as we had for the for the GTK uh, 
file chooser dialogue for for Vivaldi because yeah they share the same window role and uh, you can see that this is the GTK2 version uh, because I use a GTK2 version of Sublime uh, a GTK2 version of Sublime 3 actually I haven't told you about that but that's the the, the case uh, and this one is GTK3 um, but they, they share now the same rule, which will always make this window floating, put it in the center. As long as the, there doesn't exist multiple rules targeting it. So, so this is just to show you that sometimes you need to be more specific with, with the rules and stuff, but it's also not that difficult to do so. Um, and sure, I have this uh, amazing secret technology called i3info here, so I can see the instance name, class name, and window roles and stuff like that. But the thing is, you can see it in um, i3king, in the output of i3king as well. Uh, every time a, a new window is created, this for example, it prints here, window, and then you can see class is simple screen recorder, instance is simple screen recorder, title is this, window type is normal, window role is unknown. So you can see all properties of all windows, uh, as long as you have, um, as long as the window trigger a rule, uh, you can see it. If it doesn't trigger any rule, uh, and that will only be true for this, uh, the temp terminal, that shouldn't trigger any rules. Uh, but every other window should either trigger one of these or the default rule, and that means you can see the output here in the i3king output. So that's what you can use to, to figure out what the uh, properties are. <clears throat> all right, all right, all right. Um, I actually like to rename Sublime as well, uh, because some it also gets weird if you have multiple Sublime windows open, which you can have sometimes. Another neat thing, by the way, with this now, uh, how much have we done that? Vivaldi stable window roll app. You know what? Let's rename. Let's rename the class instead of the of the of the instance, because then then I can show you this. Class can be Vivaldi main with a capital V. Uh, let me just change that here. Um, where is it? There. So let me just search for class, uppercase, and then rename this is a default. Reason I wanted to do that uh, is because uh, then this will work. Or it will actually not work now. We also have to add it here. Mm. Yeah, I guess we can. Or we add browser here then. Because you see Vivaldi. Ah, forgot to rename uh, reload the config. Uh, close that browser, say reload the config, reload i3 king, mod f. There. Now, class name Vivaldi main. Um, and the rule for uh, settings and, and um, dev tools here is uh, Vivaldi stable. Uh, so that means, and now I also included browser to this, because you can see this is role browser. And the reason is then you can, yeah, let's not open that crap, github.com, whatever. And then we can open a new tab here, so i 3 as because you can do this in Vivaldi. If you drag uh, a tab out like this, it will create a new window. And you see, that now uh, will match... Uh, that matches this uh, rule. That can also be handy to, to do that, you know, because when you open multiple uh, browser windows on the same workspace, you probably don't want them in the same container. Maybe you do, but uh, I like this much more. And this can sometimes be useful to have do this. Um, and it would also be true for if we open uh, like private private window, it will open like this. 
following that same rule. Um, you see, it's more, not that much set up, but then a lot of things get uh, automatically it becomes as you imagine it to be, <laughs> in a way. Um, all right, renaming Sublime, we don't really have to do that uh, because let's not open multiple Sublime windows. Uh, but it could be, it's probably a good idea to do that as well. Um, all right, how, how are we doing? 45 minutes. We could end this video here, or I could also set up uh, the file manager. Why not? We, If you have watched this far, 15 minutes more to get PCMN FM up and going as well. Doesn't hurt, right? Um, let's quickly do that here. Super plus E, because that's the default key binding to open the file manager since Windows 95 or something. So that's what we are, what we are using. Uh, uh, let's see now, instance PCMAN FM, ex execute PCMAN FM, new win home directory. Then we can do one super shift E. That would be config. Save, reload, conflicts. Uh, okay, super E. That is what we use for layout toggling, you know, this one. We have to change that. And I kind of want to keep that key bindings. Let's, uh, where do we have it here? Uh, the G is what I usually use. Uh, then mod shift E is actually also occupied by uh, this this uh, key binding, mod shift E brings up the exit nag bar thing here. And that can be good to, to have that. Uh, so let's do mod, uh, mod one plus uh, F4 maybe. Reload. Uh, now, if everything is working, we should be able to open Peaceman FM with mod E, it does. Uh, mod shift E doesn't work, or it works, but it toggles it. You see, I set up two key bindings here. One, uh, one of them, I would like to open Peaceman FM with uh, the home directory, and the other one, mod shift E, opens uh, the dot config directory. Uh, but as you can see, it doesn't work here uh, if one of them is open. Pressing mod E now, it just toggles that one. So you can just have one since they share the instance name, of course. Um, also, you, you have to use new win here. I just added that because I know, know we have to do that. Um, so all we have to do is, is uh, change uh, change uh, the instance names here. Let's uh, change this one to D and this one to B or Peaceman FM D, Peaceman FM B. Uh, and then we also have to add rename PCMan FM. Save, reload, mod E. There, mod shift E. There, and now we actually have two of them and we can target them individually. Let's uh, set up window rules for them. Uh, and also, quickly here, it doesn't matter what uh, directory is open here, uh, it doesn't matter at all. Mod Shift D will always open a new one there. This will be like the PCMAN FM D, no matter which uh, 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 directory is open. And that is why you cannot really use the, the definitely not with this one, you know, use the, the directory name or the, the title, title name, you know, uh, whatever. Let's uh, set up window rules for them. Instance equals PCMAN FM B to container B instance PCMAN FM D to container D reload i3 king mod E boom into the D container mod shift E boom into the B container toggle the B container there then we can browse here go to some just open some directory here whatever mod shift E 
this and this is useful for having multiple file managers is is good so you can drag and drop files it's it's the sometimes the easiest way to copy files and stuff like that um yeah whatever that was fast <laughs> we don't have to talk more about it that's how i set up uh, pcman fm um or I actually do some more things and maybe I think we can take that in, in another video because now we, we have a, now we really have like the base Budridge setup here with everything um, that I like to do. But there are some things um, left to do here. Um, sure, we did this actually title format because I like to change the title format of almost all windows like Vivaldi here. I don't like the window title being displayed there. Uh, we could just add like title format to Vivaldi as well if we wanted to um, but uh, I do some more uh, things with file managers to make them even um, easier to use and also terminals now sure we can kind of easily create terminals with our i3 run key bindings here uh, but it gets uh, a bit uh, messy when you want to um, yeah apply hackerman color scheme and stuff like that inside this i3 config so what i like to do with uh, the terminal is create a wrapper script uh, that i start instead of, of doing so that basically have all of this baked into it and um, some extra options so you can select color scheme font size and stuff like that that is something we can take in a uh, maybe the next video but uh, yeah, hopefully you have a better understanding on how I have uh, configured uh, i3 and how my setup really works here after watching these uh, videos. And <laughs> you see, I, I, uh, this has been difficult making these videos. You can just look at these releases here. I think I made three releases now in like two days here. One here, here. Yeah, three releases in two days here. and Or four. <laughs> and then here. Uh, three or four releases in, in just a, a couple of days so since i started making these videos i have made about maybe 12 15 <laughs> updates to to i3s and i i think i said so in the first video that, that i thought this will be really easy to make this little uh, show this i3 from scratch now because it's uh, i3s in su is in such a good shape I thought there would be almost no uh, bugs, but I have encountered so many bugs that I didn't know about uh, because I'm using it like this from, from the start in the default setup. And that, that was kind of an eye opener to me that uh, this is something I really need to do more often. And I think this will become an annual thing. So maybe a year from now, I would do this uh, these videos again, showing more or less the same things. And of course, if there have come up anything new I probably have I will show that as well but you know i3 from scratch uh, both to, to always have an updated version of this and I, I, I think I will go through my archive and see the the old videos I done on these topics and remove them so I just have one um, version of this so to speak but it's also for me to uh, discover bugs and, and stuff like this it, it has been even if it has been <laughs> Uh, rough, you know, uh, starting over, you know, this video I'm recording now, I think this is take six or something. <laughs> it, it's the most difficult video I have ever done. And now nothing has um, um, has been terrible this time. And now everything seems to work. Uh, because I have uh, stopped the recording, fixed the issue, made an update uh, and stuff like that. And all, all of this, it takes uh, takes time, you know, <laughs> to do that. But it, I'm not complaining at all. I'm actually really glad that I have um, found the bugs and squashed them. And uh, now I3S in, is in really good shape. I also know that i3 will make a new release uh, very soon and this release uh, will not be boring like the other two has been uh, to say the least you know the, the, a lot of things is happening with this new i3 uh, version and I'm sure <laughs> it might uh, break some of my scripts but uh, we, we'll see we'll see thank you for watching everybody have a great day